My mother, she set me up. She sent me to a mental institution, made me think that I was going crazy. But it turned out, oh boy, I know what she was up to, and it's all because of her new boyfriend, who, by the way, is nothing but toxic. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it. So, this story's going to be super crazy, super fast. So, I suggest you sit down and get buckled up before reading all of it. To start, I'm Alex. I'm 30. I'm successful. Or, I was. You'll know all about it in a bit, but basically, my mom screwed me over, which is kind of funny because usually it's like a close friend that betrays you, or a partner, or something like that. But for me, it was my own parent. Kind of stupid and pathetic if you ask me, but you know what? It is what it is. Basically, my dad passed away when I was young, like 15, 16 maybe. I don't even remember that well at this point because the entire time after that, it's been so hard on us. It was just easier to forget. Anyways, after he died, my mom tried providing for me and taking up a job as a waitress, but she was not happy with the situation because my father was the only one who earned in the house, and after him, we had enough from his leftover money to just be able to pay for our rent and utilities. My mom did not like the lifestyle change we had because she was used to my dad spoiling her, and I just hated seeing her so sad. So, I took it upon myself to bring her happiness, which meant getting her anything she needed, even if it was expensive. I took on multiple jobs while studying. I did everything I could to be the perfect son to her, and even at this age, I tried and did everything to make her feel like there's nothing that she can't be. However, I do feel like I have a spoiled her a bit, just, well, because what I'm about to tell you will shock you to the core. It shocked me. Even though it happened to me, but it does not get easier to talk about. I've made her get out of my life, but I need to know if I'm the a-hole for being so harsh with her, even if she's potentially ruined my entire life. So, right now, I would say I'm very successful. Not in the way that I'm famous and everyone knows me, but the way that I own a company and I have a lot of people who work for me. And the way that I earn enough to support myself and my family and... I can also afford most of the luxuries that I want. I don't have to worry about all that. You guys get me? I'm at the point in my life, and I'm very proud of myself for getting this far so early in my life, and so was my mother. Although, this one time, she told me I had to try harder and in more money, and but I lashed out at her because I felt like the only reason she wanted me to become so successful and have a nice paying job was not that she wanted me to do well and have an excellent life, but because she wanted to use the money on herself. Oh, for selfish reasons. Her reply broke my heart because she teared up immediately after hearing me say that and admitted that the only reason she was pushing me hard was because she understood the struggles of not having enough and she didn't want me to go through that. That's when it struck me that everything my mother ever did was for my own benefit, and not once has she ever tried to do something for her own personal gain. I did not like fighting with her. It always drained me mentally to fight with her, and the only person in my life who has been with me all the time I've been struggling. Well, apart from my best friend, Ren. He's been in my life ever since I was a teenager and struggling to understand the reason for continuing to live life without dad's support. If it weren't for Rin, I'm not even sure I'd be alive right now, to be honest. This reminds me. He'd always been there for me, even when I was getting annoyed by my mother's constant nagging. To me, it felt like she was trying to put me down, but Rin was the one who made me understand her point of view. Especially when I told him about all the stuff that she said to me after a huge fight we had. He never once went, Ugh, I told you so. Instead... He listened to me rant about it all before helping me clear my mind and think a bit rationally about the entire situation with Ma. I owe him a lot because I don't know where I'd be without him. Emotionally and physically, of course. Okay, moving on from the backstory. Um, I'll tell you guys what actually happened and the reason I'm posting this. So, basically, a few months ago, almost seven or eight months I'd say... I came home from work to find my mom making out with some random 60-year-old dude on my couch. 
When I confronted her and asked who he was, she told me they've been in love for quite a while now and she did not get the time to tell me before today. Which, first of all, ouch! Second of all, that man looked like he was bad news. As her son, I wanted what was best for her, so I tried talking to the guy and asking what he does and all that stuff that usually you ask mom's new boyfriend. John, which was his name, told me he lost his job around a year ago or so and now is living on a pension and money that he got from his kids every six months or so. This also meant that he's getting evicted from his house and my mother just decided to drop the bomb on me. That he's going to be staying with us for now. Because he had no home and he was dating my mom. So, obviously for some bullcrap reason, he deserved the same pampering I gave my mom. Absolute bull if you ask me, because that man has not done a single thing for me in my entire existence. And I literally had just met him, so <laughs> it would have been very stupid of me to just accept the fact that he would be living with me. But when I refused, my mom started getting really, really sad and just told me how she'd be uncomfortable with her lover out on the streets while she enjoys the comfort of the warm house and basically emotionally manipulating me into letting him stay. You'd think, as a grown adult... This kind of thing would not affect me and I'd be able to make my own decisions, you know, as a 30-year-old man. Especially because this decision involved letting a sketchy man stay in my apartment. Anyways, I have no other choice but to agree to let him live. Because I did not want to disappoint my mother and also, I technically have no other choice since I was kind of cornered. Even though, yeah, it's my house and I pay for everything here. It seemed like nothing in the house was ever my decision. For as long as my mom lived with me, as frustrating as it was, I did not know how to deal with it, so I went over to Rin's house and stayed with him for a few days. I could not even bear to look at that old man's face without heating up due to anger. Again, Rin told me she was just looking out for a man that she fell in love with and tried to make me understand why she felt the need to be so emotional while convincing me to let him stay. So, when I went back home, I told my mother that I would let John stay with us, but I won't be paying for anything extra on his behalf. She agreed with me, but she was lying, though, which I found out about later. For the first few days, everything was okay, and I barely saw both of them because I was so swarmed with work at this point. I left early and came back really late, too. They both would be asleep by the time I'd come home, so I've almost no interaction with either of them. Until, one day. My mom decides to drop the bomb on me that John was asking for some money to get some things he wanted for his room that I was so generous to provide for him. When I refused, I told her that I would not be paying for anything related to him, and especially for things that were a mere want. She got mad, stormed off. I thought that was the end of it all, but then, a few days later, I heard nothing from her. Not even a peep. And usually, because I was busy with work, it was normal, but this time it felt weirdly suspicious, and I can't really put my finger on it. Like, they were hiding something from me. At first, I assumed that man, John, was stealing from me, so I checked my wallet. Everything was in it, as it should be, so I discarded my worries and let it be. But then days go by and I start feeling a bit funky. Not in the way where you get high and your world turns funky for a few moments, but it's back to normal once you're sober. No, no, no. It wasn't like that at all. I start seeing things that weren't there, hearing things that weren't there, and even talking to myself because, well, I could just not stop feeling like my brain had another person living in it that I needed to comfort or talk to or guide. Yeah, stuff like that just kept happening to me. It got to a point where I felt like it was my, well, disrupting of my life. Making me incapable of functioning like a normal person day to day. I thought that must have been the stress of everything that went on because obviously, this was a lot to deal with in such a short amount of time. So, it was understandable I was losing my mind. It's what I was feeling like ever since this entire thing started, but I never expected it to get this bad. I went to my mom to let her know this was happening because I thought she'd be able to help me on this and 
make me understand what was happening, but it seemed like she either did not believe me because she told me to stop being dramatic and, quote, act my age. I also noticed that she seemed very nervous at the time, which now I know the reason, of course, but at the time I completely overlooked it because her being nervous in the conversation did not make sense. The question was, can I not lose my mind at the age of 30? What the hell was she on and what the hell was I thinking to take her words to heart and continue on my life when all of this was happening? But you know what? I just mustered up the courage to talk to my mom again. Determined to make her understand the depths of my struggles and how they were messing with my everyday life. And guess what? It was like talking to a different person this time. She surprised me with her responses like she genuinely cared. She understood the overwhelming stress I was under and reassured me that it was perfectly fine to feel overwhelmed, no matter what my age was, and apologized for implying that as well. She suggested that I take a break and let her handle some of the responsibilities for a while. She made it clear that she recognized the importance of my mental health, well-being, and was ready to support me through this tough period. I can't tell you how much relief flooded over me, at that exact moment, especially because my mom has a degree in business and she knew all the ups and downs of my business. I was not too hesitant to hand it to her for a few months while I recovered from the stress. Well, it's a good thing that I told Ren all this was happening because it did well for me in long term. His knowing what exactly was happening, I'm a little regretful that I did not believe him or listen to him when he told me to get a doctor's checkup because that would have solved so many problems, but oh well. As it turns out, John was manipulating my mother and was planning on sending me to the mental institution, which is exactly what they did. As my condition grew worse, my mom kept acting like she was, well, she knew this was happening because of stress and was so sure I'd be okay in no time. If my condition had been a bit better, Maybe I would notice the insane amount of money just going from my account on a regular basis. I would have also noticed how slowly all my properties were going under her name. I mean, I did know she was getting some signatures and fingerprints, but she told me those were for the business and that there were some documents I need to sign so we could secure deals with another company. It wasn't until a week or so. I don't even remember at this point, but I noticed all the stuff that I had under my name, including the house, was now under my mom's. The bills and everything were coming addressed to her, and I was confused but also angry, because why would she do that to me? Apparently, John manipulated her. Yeah, she didn't think it was manipulation, but it's very obvious that's what it is. He had convinced her to do this because, and I quote, my health was deteriorating and someone stable should be taking care of the business and the assets. It was absolute baloney. I told Ren about it too and he told me I should fight back. I couldn't though. Not when I wasn't sure what was real and what was not. So I told Ren all of this and I told him to take care of it for me whether legally or not I don't care. I guess my mom must have overheard the conversation because the next day she asked me to go with her to quote, run a couple errands. But she took me to a mental institute and got me admitted there as a patient suffering from harmful delusions. Best believe I was super confused because she acted like she was trying to help me this entire time, so why was she suddenly getting me admitted to a mental hospital? She signed off the papers needed and pretended as if she, well, cared for me while putting up this entire show of how hard it was for her to leave me alone there. I was there for about two or three months before Rin got me out of there. What happened was, Rin figured out that my mom probably planned all this because he knew I was okay before and he also knew every single thing that happened over the last few months, so it's easy for him just to connect the dots. Turns out, he gets a lawyer and everything to fight against my mom because she was bent on not letting me ever out of that hospital no matter how much Ren told me to check me and see whether I was actually delusional or if I was okay now or not. 
It took a while to gather all the evidence, and they managed to get me tested as well in the first month that I was there. And to be honest, I did not even know what was happening. I was so depressed about what my mom did, I could barely process what was going on. Rin requested a hearing and got all the evidence and my medical reports that I'm not mentally well while signing all those papers, and somehow, I'm still not sure of the details. He tried every possible way to get me out of that mental institute. Well, it took him almost 90 days to get me out of there, but I'm so grateful he did because I don't know what would have happened to me and all the things I've worked so hard for if he had not been there for me. Don't worry, I made sure Rin knew just how much I appreciated him. Right now, I'm confused because I took an oath to myself that I would never forgive my mom for what she's done to me, but she keeps coming back and asking me to forgive her. And seeing her in this state is just making me feel like a really big a-hole. But then again, she did kind of ruin my life for a guy, and it's not the first time she's made me feel like she doesn't care about me, so I really just don't know what to do anymore. Am I really such an a-hole for not forgiving her and letting her into my life again? What's up everybody, Mr. Reddito here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today's story is that of a family drama, that's for sure. If you guys are new to the channel and you want daily videos, smash that subscribe button and let's jump into update number one. I'm back with an update. Basically, during the time I posted the initial post in this update, my mom's gone absolutely feral. I mean, I didn't even know she was capable of acting this way, but I guess what I've learned from all this is that people aren't really who you expect them to be. After Rin got me out of this institution, I had a really tough time trying to come to terms with the fact that my mom was capable of ruining her own son's life, just so she could give her own lover a better life. I felt pathetic like I should not even exist because what's the point when no one really cares about me? Rin got me out of this hole I was burying myself in and helped me realize that I needed to get my life together. And the first step to do that was to get all my property back. I filed a court case against my mom for taking all my property while I was not in the right mindset to be making those decisions. Till then, I had no contact with her and I did not even know if she realized I was back or not. During all this though, the really hard part was that my mom kept showing up to my house unannounced and pleading and begged for forgiveness or at least listening to her explanation. I did not want to do either and I did not really feel safe living alone at my house, so I moved in with Ren for a couple of weeks. The plan was that I was going to stay at Ren's house and when my mom would stop contacting me, I'd move back to my apartment. Obviously, like everything else in my life, this plan backfired as well because somehow... Don't ask me how, <laughs> because I'm just as freaking clueless as you guys are in this matter. She found Ren's house address and showed up there. I wasn't home at the moment, but Ren told me she barged into the house, looking crying and her eyes out, screaming at Ren to know where I was, begging him to help her get forgiven, all while throwing all the cups and plates that sat on the dining table as a way to intimidate Ren. I found it a little funny because Ren's like a six feet tall dude who's got muscles bigger than my mom's face, so I'm not sure what exactly she tried to achieve, but she obviously failed. I apologize to Ren as well, because he has to struggle so much because of me. And like the good friend he is, he shrugged me off and told me not to worry about it too much, but I can't help it. I feel like such a terrible person right now, Dragging my best friend into this mess, probably causing him a lot of stress while not listening to my mom, who clearly feels some sort of remorse for whatever she did. But I can't. Not when she turned me into a mentally unstable man incapable of taking care of himself and stole all my property. Ugh! I don't even know what I'm going to do anymore or if there's going to be another update. I'm sorry it ended like this. Update number two. Hey guys, I'm back with another update. I know, I said I don't know if I'm going to be back, but considering my life's a freaking crap show, obviously nothing could ever stay calm. In the last update, I mentioned that I filed a court case against my mom, right? Well, let me tell you how it went. 
Man, this legal process was an absolute nightmare. I never thought I'd find myself in a courtroom suing my own mother of all people. It's like a messed up episode of family drama. It dragged on for what felt like an eternity, straining our relationship even further and turning our own once close family into an absolute war zone. But here's the thing. It's not just about the material possessions. It's about the ultimate betrayal, the mind games, and the complete disregard for my well-being. I'm talking trust shattered into a million pieces. No matter what reason she gives or how she tries to spin it, the fact remains that she took advantage of my vulnerable mental state. But wait, there's more to this wild ride. After going through the grueling legal process and enduring the strain it put on our relationship, something unexpected happened. My mom pulled me aside for a private conversation and what she revealed left me absolutely dumbfounded. She dropped the bombshell on me, confessing that she'd been played like a fiddle by her lover, John. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, he had been pulling the strings behind the scenes, manipulating her into taking over my stuff while I was in such a vulnerable state. And get this. She only sent me away because guess who threatened to get her arrested the whole dang time? John! I could not believe what I was hearing. It's like a scene out of a crazy crime movie. The truth hit me like a ton of bricks, and suddenly it all made sense. My mom was not the mastermind at all. She'd fallen under John's twisted little spell. At that moment, I saw a glimmer of regret in her eyes. She poured out apologies, admitting that she had been fooled by her emotions and could not see through John's web of lies. It was a surreal experience, watching her own up to her mistake and genuinely feel remorse for the pain that she caused. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. This revolution does not let her off the hook completely. It's a complicated situation, and I'm still grappling with all the conflicting emotions. On one hand, I feel a bit of sympathy for my mother, realizing she was also a victim of manipulation. But on the other hand, I can't ignore the anger and hurt that built up during the whole mess. After all the twists and turns, the judge finally delivered the verdict. My mom ended up with a one-year sentence for larceny and fraud, as we cannot prove that my mother is the one who drugged me or that her boyfriend was involved in that. The court saw through the manipulation and deceit, recognizing the gravity of her actions. Yeah, it's a bittersweet moment for me because there's so many conflicting emotions. A part of me felt a sense of justice, knowing that accountability was served, but another part could not help but feel a tinge of sadness. After all, it's not easy seeing your own mother face the consequences of her actions. But through it all... I knew deep down that this was the right choice, so for now, I'm aiming to heal from all this. Update number three. So, it's been a year since my last update. Yeah, I know, man, a year. A really long time, and I know I said this before as well, but this time I genuinely did not think I would come back to this post. Especially to update you guys on what's been going on and how it's been going in my life. I did not really see a point in updating you guys if there's nothing that serious going on. You know what I mean? That would be kind of boring, so I stopped checking and updating, but I don't know if you guys have even noticed it's been a year since my last update. Which means, ugh, my mother is out of jail. I went to visit her a few times. The fact that she was not the mastermind behind all of this had really stuck with me, and... I knew she was regretful about what she did, so I wanted to give her a chance to make it right. That doesn't mean I forgive her, no. I was just trying to give her a shot at making me see if she really meant to do all that or not. I had not once met the dude she had fallen in love with, and I did not think I was about to either. He'd probably figured out what happened, so he must have been keeping low, which, honestly, I did not mind at all because it's a good choice on his part. If I had to see, his face one more time, especially after everything that happened, I'm not sure I would have been able to stop myself from making sure he can never speak or walk again. Anyways, when my mom got released, she went to go meet and, well, the old dude the very next day. Ah, she assured me that she was ready to turn over a new leaf and that she wanted closure and a fresh start, but deep down, a nagging doubt just 
tugged at my heart. I knew that her connection with John had not completely faded away. Within a matter of days, my mom was back in touch with him. They met secretly, and it's like a punch to the gut. A painful reminder that she was not completely over him. Despite her promises of closure, it seemed that their twisted bond still held strong, and he had a sway over her. But I also knew that she was genuinely sorry for what she did. In her desperation to mend our shattered bond, my mom pulled out all the stops. She showered me with apologies, gifts, acts of kindness, you name it. She did everything within her power to gain my forgiveness. She attended therapy sessions, read books about healing relationships, and even enrolled in a support group for people who had been manipulated. Her efforts were commendable, and they showed me a side of her I had not seen before. A side that genuinely wanted to rebuild what was broken. Yet, as we spent more and more time together, it became increasingly apparent that her journey to closure was not a linear one. There were moments when her guard slipped when the memories of her time with John flooded back into her head. It was a battle she fought with herself, torn between her love for him and her desire to salvage our mother-child bond. Navigating this delicate dance of forgiveness and reconciliation was not easy, I promise. I had to confront my own feelings of insecurity, knowing that I could not compete with the intensity of their history, but... I also had to make acknowledge of her genuine efforts and the length she went to make amends. It was a delicate balance between protecting my heart and giving her a chance to prove herself. Well, in a crazy twist of fate, things took a wild turn when my mother once again met up with John. Can you believe it? Turns out the guy was cheating on her. Yeah, who would have guessed? He was only with her because she could provide him with money and everything he manipulated her into stealing from me. The whole facade of their passionate romance came crashing down, leaving my mom devastated and utterly broken. And guess who she turned to for comfort? Yeah, that's right. Yours truly. Seeing her in that state, all I could do was be there for her. We had our fair shares of ups and downs, but at the moment, none of it really mattered. I held her close, wiped away her tears, and tried my best to offer some kind of solace. It was a strange role reversal, but hey, sometimes life throws you those unexpected curveballs when you were expecting a fastball. Despite everything, I could not help but feel a pang of sympathy for her pain. It reminded me that even in the midst of our own complicated mess, we're still capable of showing compassion and support of each other. That's when my mom told me that she would get help and help me get John in jail for everything that he has done. The anger she felt was enough to get me motivated to fight against him as well, but before I filed a case against him, my mom wanted to go meet him just one last time. You know, just to clear the air. Well, that's what she said. At this point, I'm thinking if I should take her up on the offer because it's not like my mom was the only one to blame for all of this. For all we know, John influenced and manipulated her into drugging me so he could have the money for himself. He deserved a punishment just as much as my mother did and I should not just let him go on living his life after he destroyed mine. Well, I might just take her up on the offer. I'm not really sure yet. I'll let you guys know in the next update. Thanks. Update number four. I took her up on the offer. Yeah, I know. It's very obvious that I was going to do that, right? Especially according to Rin, who told me I basically had the answer floating above my head at all times, but it still took a long time for me to be able to say it out loud. I also decided to forgive my mom. The moment I told her I forgive her was engraved in my head. She starts crying and hugged me, telling me how sorry she was and how she realized my worth and how much she loves me and all that stuff. I'm really glad I forgave her and had this moment with her, though, because she's no longer with us anymore. Yeah. When all of that happened, my mom told me she wanted to confront John on her own. And even though I did not trust that man, I let her make her own decisions and go to his house alone. I did make her turn on the location and everything before she left just in case, and, well, I'm grateful for this because, well, 
He killed my mom. I'm really sorry for just dropping it like that on you guys, but I don't know any other way to express it. I'm still grieving. I'm still processing, but I know what happened. I made that a-hole pay for what he did, though. When my mom went to confront him and told him to confess that he was the one who told her to do all this, he refused and acted like he had no idea what was going on. When my mom showed her the text... Wow, that took place between the both of them where he was giving her ideas on what to do and how to execute them. He grabbed the nearest lamp and smashed it over her head. I know all this because there's ring cameras in the living room that captured all of that. And as soon as I did not hear from my mom for over 30 minutes, I rushed there and found out everything that happened. I saw my mom on the floor while John was trying to drag her body out of the house and... I noticed the cameras and got to work immediately. I got the same lawyer who fought my case against my mom and made sure John went to jail for not only what he did to me, but also for murdering my mother. He's going to spend the rest of his life rotting in prison. I still don't know what to think, though, because even though my relationship with my mother was very strained, it's getting better and I felt like we were growing closer and we have never been before. But it's still very tough to realize that she's not in this world any longer. I don't know how I'm going to get past this grief, but I trust life enough to know that this time, this time, it shall pass as well. Huh. Hopefully. First of all, guys, I want to do a big shout out in the comment section for Rin. If it wasn't for Rin, which by the way was OP's best friend... I don't think OP would have ever gotten out of this mess. It just seemed every single hole that OP was finding himself in, Ren was right there to pull him out and say, you know what, we're not going to let you go down this road. I know you don't belong in this mental institute and I'm going to get you out. Guys, could you imagine what would have happened if it wasn't for Ren? So drop your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let's talk about it. I hope you guys are having a great day. If you are, let me know about it in the comment section. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second right now. Smash that subscribe button for daily videos. Have a fantastic day. And remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.